What's up, people? It's day two for the rigging job, and we are on the backstay. The backstay is called that because, well, it's, it's on the, the back stay on the back. <laughs> this is an adjustable backstay, adjustable with the winch handle, and as you turn the winch handle, it adjusts the tension on the backstay, causing the mast to bend back. So what we've done is we've taken all the tension off the front. There's no forestay or anything on it, or even a temporary forestay, just so we can get this pin out real quick. All right, you want to hold that for a second? So I've already taken the excessively long cotter pin out of here, and we're just gonna, just gonna tap it out. Put your hand over there. Oh, it almost flew in the water. Yep. Go. There we go. Ow! <laughs> that hurt my foot too. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. So now that the back stays off, we're gonna tension up the four stay again, the temporary four stay, which is really the spinnaker hire. And uh, then I'll go up the mast and, and disconnect it. Tie another line to it so we can lower it down. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle, that's, that's how that's done. And this is an insulator. I mentioned them before, but they put these on there and effectively there's one on the bottom and there's one on the top. You see way up there? And effectively it makes this piece of cable an antenna, like a floating piece of wire. So you can you can apply a charge to it and it becomes a big antenna and that's for hf and i think i mentioned on the last video that hf is kind of an old technology i know that some of you love it but honestly um if you think that russia is going to shut down starlink and we're going to revert back to hf you watch too many post-apocalyptic um videos so this is the norseman one i think this one has the uh it has a fail slave, so if it does explode, it catches itself, but they're stupid expensive and um, not used anymore. So these insulators have a, have a tendency to just fail. And if that fails, your whole rig will come down because as soon as the rig bends forward, it breaks. All right. Okay, so we successfully got the backstay down without anybody getting hurt at all. No, that's bullshit. He dropped the thing on my foot and I think it's broken. Okay, maybe somebody got a little bit hurt. I, I don't think so, though. I think he's just being a big baby about it. No. This bitch dropped that thing on my foot. <laughs> Actually, this came off the force day, I, but you were doing such a good job that I didn't want to mess you up. So we're going to add one of these to the, to the back stay. That wasn't, this wasn't there before. So what we need to do is, this is the end that we want, right? Yes. So this is now going to be the new end. And this is gonna go here, and where we cut is where this buries itself. So this is gonna bury itself there. So about right there is where we're gonna cut. Jesus, could you get a bigger marker? Huh? So first things first, gotta put the little thingy on. This is something that I forget to do all the time on every job, wiring jobs, all kinds of jobs. But if you try to do this without that, you're screwed. Um, and then we're gonna uncoil the outer wires and leave the inners, okay? So I like to do it. I do it a little different than Chris does. I like to go way far down because it's just, it's just easier for me to get them out of the way. Okay, now, so this, this cone goes on this direction. Okay, how far down does it go? It goes down 1.5 times the diameter of the line. So we're gonna put it down to where, about where, it's, where it should be, and then we'll measure. Ow. Sorry, this is one, and this is probably about 0.5. So 1.5, and Boom. Oh yeah, look at that. It's really close. Yeah. So this is a little different. This is different than the stay locks. Okay, and then and then we just grab the end and roll it back and it conveniently sets right back where it should be. Alright, so to, to set these in with the last couple I've had to do this, you just kinda give her a couple of hits. Okay, so we got some thread locker, that'll seal it. 
and then we're going to put some goo in there. So I'm just going to, but the UV stuff has a little bit of UV stuff. So, so there's that. Okay. Oh, the goo's coming out all over oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out. Watch oh, out for that. Oh, God, no. <laughs> hey, you're getting it on the other one. Oh, I don't care about the other one. I care about me. Look what you did to me. Hey, hey, don't scratch my shit up. Okay, so we wiped all of the goo off of this. Well, most of it, anyway. It doesn't have to all come off. And then now, we'll take, um... We'll take this. Put it on here. This will be the top, and then, yeah, see, we're just like a quarter inch longer. Whoa, whoa, oh, there it goes. Right into the water. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh! Okay, it gets splashed in salt water all the time. The salt water is going to make it all rusty now. Check this out. This is how you tie a halyard to a stay. Well, you can use an icicle hitch if you have a smaller line, or you can use a rolling hitch. Since we're tying it here, and it's going to it's going to slide up, and it, it, this is a lot thicker, we're just going to use a rolling hitch. It's, it's a lot easier to tie. So we go under it. All right. And then now that we've gone under, we're gonna use that same rotational direction throughout the entire knot. We're gonna go back three times and forward twice. Okay, so one, two. So which, which one did you say was much better at grabbing onto a round object? Icicle hitch. Icicle hitch, I have to remember two, that one. Two, <laughs> three. Okay, so we've got three back, and now we're gonna go forward twice. One, and do a hitch. And one more hitch, just just for good measure. That last one is just, it's not really required, but we don't want this to slip, okay? Now, this will slide up here and we can pull it up with that and it's not gonna slip off, okay? Rolling hitch is what they call that knot. Okay, I've showed you how to take off a cotter pin. Now I'm gonna show you how to put it back on the best way, okay? So, pop your, pop your cotter pin through. And then you're gonna use a screwdriver. Just hold it, and you wanna put the screwdriver right in the center, right in between. Okay, and then slide it up, and then turn it. Turn the screwdriver. Okay, that's it. And then, you're just widening the teeth so you can grab them with this thing. And then we're gonna slide this up, and then you're gonna kinda of Use that as a fulcrum right here and bend them back a little bit more. And then we're gonna open up these jaws. So we're gonna grab them like this. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. And then you and then you close the jaws a little bit and you finish the job. Cool, right? I'm doing this upside down so you guys can see it. Cool, and then and then if you want to, you can grab the two ends and get them real nice and real nice and bent in. Cool. That's it. That's how to do it. Many feet. Check out the difference. Look at the difference in size. That's huge. It's like another 50% bigger. These are strong. I like these blue wave connectors. Come on. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey. I feel much more confident with this, knowing that it's... Oh, this is...
we go. Uh, it's end of day three. We've got, let's see, both lowers done, the baby stay, uh, the four stay, the back stay so far. So we just have the side shrouds. So if, if this is something that not a lot of people know, if the stay goes athwart ships, it's a shroud. If it goes forward and aft, it's a stay. So this is a stay and these are the side shrouds. So we have the shrouds left to do. Um, so I want to show you guys something real quick. This is, um, this is the shackle on top of the swivel. When you pull this up, it pulls the sail up. Sail attaches here, shackle attaches here. Sail swivels around. So um, this will stay stay stationary while everything everything else moves. That's the whole point. Um, I'm gonna lock wire this. I'm gonna show you guys how to lock wire real quick. All right. So first of all, you want to take a pair of pliers and make sure that this thing is all the way all the way on. Well, I've already done it, so that's good to go. Get it done. It doesn't have to be straight like that. This just happened to work out that way. It can be sideways. It doesn't matter. Go through. And, and over once leave a little tail twice Ooh, come on baby come on yep and then three times yeah And then the last thing is you want to bend this in so it bends in inside so it's not going to snag the sail. This is important. Sorry guys. I'm... Yeah, so, so you see how this is going in there inside it? That's the, that's the whole trick to this. Now you can't, nobody's going to catch their finger on it and the sail won't catch on it either. So what do you think? I love it. It reminds me about when I was in prison. <laughs> wow, it is very orange, bro. <laughs> and look, it matches my jacket. It's very orange. Whoa. Okay? All right, we're uh, we're half done with the rigging now. The forestay is absolutely tight, and the back stay is good. So the forestay and back stay are now finished. The baby stay and is done, and the lowers just need to be tightened. And then the, the shrouds, the intermediate and the and the cap shroud are the only ones left. Woohoo! I think it's one more day of work, and then uh, you guys, we can get out of here. Yeah, I know. Wow! Whoa, I'm excited to go on this adventure with you guys. Go sail now. We yeah. can we can try sailing for We've once. We've been motoring the whole way since we're yeah. Bay. All right, job well done. All right, it's, it's breakfast time, day four. We're almost done with the rigging. We just have to do the shrouds and we're having a nutritious breakfast. Captain Crunch. And instead of milk, because we can't have milk on the boat because there's refrigerator space issues, we've decided to just use Tito's vodka instead. <laughs> so it's a delicious, nutritious, and it gets you through the day. Okay, we are going back up the mast for the 87th time. And uh, we're going to go to the second spreaders and check out the spreader ends, which are these things. We're going we're gonna to start at the top. Damn. Doing good so far. Walking up the mast. I like to sit down and kind of walk up the mast, you know? Nice and comfortable. All right, so we're going to um, take, take off these spreader ends and see what is underneath. This is nasty. These are like West Marine. This is West Marine spreader tips that have been on here forever. This is a spreader boot. This is an old ass spreader boot. Look, that's what that's what color it's supposed to be. Gross. Okay, at the end. Oh, look at that. It is a bolt. So we're gonna take that off right now. All right, so the cool part about this is we can leave all of the stuff attached. So it's just a bolt holding that together. So we can just leave it on there. Cool. And that'll pop off once we get the thing. Um, once we get it uh, undone, 
All right, so we finished the second spreaders. Second spreaders up there. First spreaders down here. And check this out. <laughs> Just inspecting everything. It's worn through. Look at that hole. Cool, yeah? Those need to be replaced. We're gonna replace those with some, uh, some leather ones. Okay, we're gonna go and check this one out. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh, also worn through, wow. Wow, this one's super messed up. Okay, well, this had to happen. So, one thing I'm noticing, I don't know if you can see it here or not, is that that spreader on the far side of us is way higher, way, way higher. Not good, people. Can you see it? Try to scoot back a little bit so you can see it. Way higher. So, uh, we gotta adjust that to be the same angle. You want it at 90 degrees. Okay. So, you want to explain what we're doing? So, we're going to start by removing both of the lowers first, or the, the mids. Inter the mid intermediate. Intermediate, the mid ones. Intermediate trials. So we have to undo this little, um, this little buckle thing. Turn we, buckle. Yep, we're going to take that off. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this to the point where we can take this pin out and just take this out and just, we're not even going to bother taking this all the way off. There's no, no sense in it. And then once we get the new ones up, then we'll switch over to the big ones that go all the way to the top. And that one's the really heavy one. I'm not lifting it. <laughs> so this one's done. Uh, the other side, that one, the, that's called the baby stay or the infant stay, the four stay and the back stay. So one, two, three, four, five of them are done. Uh, and uh, we only have four left. Okay, so I've, I've learned a lot doing, doing the last couple boats, and if I had to do it again, I would do all mechanical fittings. I would either use these Blue Wave fittings, these ones, those are pretty cool fittings, or the Stay Locks. I used Stay Locks on my boat, and we used Blue Wave on this boat, and they're basically the same. They're about the same size, they're the same strength. But there's one less bit to these. There's one less bit to these ones, yeah. Um, I think either one of those is a really good option though there is also the option of swages so these this is a swage fitting so what this is is just a mechanical fitting and you see all these lines down it they have a big machine hydraulic press that <laughs> crushes this together and these are where they always break i have had so many stays break i bet you more than eight and um, breaking means just one of the pins at least one of the pins is, is broken i've had like seven of the 19 never had more than that but um, this is the problem with, with swages because they're mechanically um, crushed they crack and they and the and the uh, lines break right here so actually this is the reason we're doing this this one has a fracture right here you can feel it with your um, you can, you can kind of see it I, I bet you yeah. it's right there you see it it's um, it's cracked all the way down so that was that was found during our initial inspection of the boat and it's got to go the whole rig is now suspect and i think this, this is actually I, I can't tell for sure I think they are original. but i think they're original so they're 29 years old 20, 28 years old and it's time to go so we're doing it we're almost done bang the bottom part Don't pop that other one out. So this is our last day, boys. Buddy Max is here to help us. Uh, all right, let's get. Go ahead. Yeah. Walking up the map.
right, now that we're done with the standing rigging, we're gonna start on the running rigging. Um, this is the first thing we're gonna start on. We already cut it. It's an old furling line. This is for the main furler. So this goes around here. This is an endless loop. So we're, we're not only going to feed this through with this new stay set, uh, we're going to do an endless loop splice on stay set. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. All right, we've got our handy dandy sail repair kit. These things are great to have. So we're gonna sew one line to the other. And we're gonna use these three things. This is a sewing palm made for right-handed. They have right-handed and left-handed. And uh, some twine and some sewing needles. Got this done. Now this is an endless loop. There's the splice. It comes through. And it's an endless loop. So uh, the reason I didn't film that part with me doing it is because Samson and Premium Ropes has that on their website and it's way better than I could do. So I'll link that in the description. But uh, yeah, this is done. We can now use that and pull in and out the sail. Yay, we have a sail. Now I'm gonna go put the, the spreader boots on the mast, uh, the spreader ends. So I'll show you how I do that. Come on with me, we'll go up the mast again. Don't wanna go to work today. Think I need a holiday. You know I got some money from my melodies. We can go to Italy, be away from the plain days. Be a Shakespeare tragedy. too small. They'll, they'll do their job, that's all that matters. Alright, it's so hard to see on this little screen if you can see how bent the mast is. But basically, you gotta put your face like right here and look up the mast and see if that track is bending any. And when you see it be have a little bit of S in it, then you pull the other side. You pull intermediate or this intermediate or the, the starboard upper the, or the port upper so it should be super straight and the only way to get it super straight is to start with the base of the mast straight so what you do is to, to tune the mast you get these all finger tight get the mast loose so it's straight because the extrusion is going to be straight so we're going to want to be straight so now that it's, it's straight you make all the base hand tight and then you pull out the the baby stay and you count the, the, the so then you pull out the baby stay and then you count the revolutions on both the side stays you know that they're the same length so you just measure you can measure the threads you can count the threads or you can just count how many revolutions you're doing so we've already done this we've pulled out the baby stay and we've counted the revolutions and we've done six revolutions on either side of the lowers now we're ready to do the intermediates and the uppers. We've already done the fore stay as well. The fore stay is tight and it's making the mast almost completely straight. So that's really good because we have an adjustable rear back stay and once that thing is adjusted, that'll be the last thing we do. We adjust it back a little bit and that'll make the, uh, the front foresail very, very tight at each, or the luff, I mean. Um, so this is what we need to do. These things are just a little bit tight. So we're going to take these and we're going to look at the mast, look where it's bent, and then go back and forth between tightening this one, looking up here, tightening this one, looking up here, tightening the outer one, looking up here again. And then once that's done, we have now tuned the rig from the dock 
and we need to go sailing to be able to see it under sail. That's the, that's the most important step, really. And if the, if the leeward side of your rig is all spaghetti, then we need to tighten it back up. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. What's up guys? Hey, if you made it to the end of that video, I very, very much appreciate it. Just to remind you guys, if you'd like to come sailing with us, we are going through the Panama Canal and then we're going to have a big New Year's Eve party in, oops, I can't go that way, in San Blas. And then we're gonna go to Cuba. And then we're gonna go to Grand Cayman. It's, there's so many cool adventures coming. Uh, we're sailing out on Takatimu and we're headed to Panama. So stay tuned for that footage. Much love, thanks for watching. Yeah.